So it dawned on me that you don't see a lot of videos on safety and recovery gear. And I did want to create this video. Um, as you can see from the picture, we just got a lot of snow, which kind of made it uh, fresh on my mind. Uh, we got about uh, 13 inches of heavy, wet snow. You see it kind of pushing the trees down there. But um, to make this even more appropriate, if any of you watch the news about this DC snowstorm, which I didn't realize when I was actually doing this filming, but uh, a, a number of motorists, I don't know how many of them, were stranded for 20 plus hours on I-95 south of DC. And I can guarantee that most of those folks were unprepared for this type of an event and uh, they, they were definitely were not prepared to spend 20 hours. I doubt they had food, water, appropriately warm clothing, uh, the ability to you know melt snow and, and filter the water to drink or any of those things. So I'm sure it was a very miserable time. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss what I use not only for recovery gear, which is primarily off-road, but obviously in this type of a circumstance, it could be uh, on-road as well. Um, and safety, of course, you could need the safety gear. But I also wanted to discuss, and uh, I'll show this in my video, the get home bag that I always carry in my vehicle. My girlfriend carries one in hers as well. Um, it's important to have those things. We very rarely need them. We hope that we'll never need them. But when it does arise, then, you know, we can take advantage of it. I've seen a number of snowstorms over the years in this area, and I've never seen one that resulted in people being stranded on the highway for 20 plus hours. Um, so it's a rare circumstance. You never know when it's going to happen. So uh, let's get on with the video. It's a lot of information. Um, hopefully at the end of the video, people will comment about what they do. So I'd really like to learn what other folks do glean some good ideas from them and hopefully some of these things will help you determine what you need for a safety recovery or a get home bag type scenario so please enjoy the video leave comments below about uh, what you do what you would do different those types of things and uh, thank you for watching ah, good morning the uh, snow finally hit Virginia we've got our first uh, major snow of the year we've got about uh, 10 inches right now and it uh, started off as a very heavy wet snow and uh, yeah as you can tell so it stuck to the trees and the trees are all drooped down my jeep is actually under there it's kind of hard to tell at this at this stage but it's there I've got to uh, got to get it cleaned up and, and available but what I wanted to do is I wanted to take the opportunity with the snow today uh, it's kind of a good day to talk about recovery gear and just basically things that you need to take with you when you're off-roading. So let me clean the Jeep up, let me get it uh, in a better spot, and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, so let's talk about communication real quick. Um, I have a GMRS radio and a CB radio installed in the Jeep. Uh, those get better reception long distances, they can transmit longer distances, and that's handy. But I also carry two... I've got the, the blue one here, the black one. Those are interesting. Normally, I just use those for spotters, right? So if I'm spotting a vehicle or someone else is spotting me, I can hand one of those to them. I can hear them on my radio, and we get cleaner communication. But another benefit to these handhelds is, in an emergency, you can use them to broadcast on channels that get much greater range. So you could go on, a, not that I'm a ham radio guy, but you could go in emergency only onto a ham radio station and possibly alert someone that you were in need of assistance if you got stranded, uh, especially during weather like this off-road. So one of my favorites though is this Garmin InReach. And there's a number of models. This is actually an older one that I've used for hiking. Uh, my girlfriend was concerned with some of my hikes. I would be out of cell phone range, which is why we need this extra communication stuff. We go places that uh, just don't have cell phone coverage. This device not only allows me to track my movements send them to the satellite and then my girl can, friend can follow where I'm at but it also allows me to send instant messages or text messages via the satellite to pre-designated phones um, so I would get into a camp spot at night I want to let her know that I'm safe and sound that I'm setting up camp I don't have cell phone coverage I just send a quick text message uh, there's some preset ones built in or you can type it yourself it interacts with your phone and off you go. You send it, it bounces off satellite, no cell phone coverage required. Now, a friend of mine last year, we were out in Bear Wallow, 
And uh, I'm sorry, we were at Hatfield McCoy Trails. We This wasn't at Bear Wallow. It was actually at Indian Ridge, I believe. Um, and we were doing the uh, UTV thing. So he's got a K&M. I rented a Razor. You can see the video in, on my channel. And we went out. We did some pretty cool trails. And we could only stay a couple of days. But they stayed for a couple more. After we left, they... Um, snow's getting crazy out there. Um, after... Uh, after we left, they continued to UTV, and they were doing some of the outlaw trails. They weren't really running across a lot of people. What well, turns out, he actually hit a stump that he couldn't see underwater, I believe is the situation, and he broke his tie rod and completely broke it. He had some tools, but he just couldn't get it serviceable enough to drive back out of there. And he just didn't see any people. It was getting dark. Him and his wife needed to get back to their RV where their dogs were. And he, he had bought one of these based on uh, my recommendation. And he actually, we were all the way already back in Virginia at the time. I got a text on my phone from his device letting me know that he was stranded and to call Ziggy's, which is a, a really great outfit out there in uh, the Hatfield McCoy Trail area, especially down in the, the southern part, and uh, let them know that uh, he was broken down. He gave me his GPS coordinates because the message automatically has those attached. And I was able to contact Ziggy's. It took them a little bit, but they actually got their folks out there with replacement parts on UTVs, found him. They were able to make the repairs and get him back to uh, his RV for the night. So uh, they come in handy. I, I would not leave without it. I don't keep it on a lot of times in the Jeep, but uh, I've got it in my bag fully charged. If I need it, it's there. I can use it. So communication's important. I wanted to cover that aspect of it. Uh, some, of the, some of the basic stuff... This bag is a get-home bag. I've been carrying a get-home bag in any of my vehicles for quite some time now. I change the loadout occasionally, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, it, it's something that I definitely carry. We'll kind of go through the contents of that here in a second. And then I've got different pieces of recovery gear, first aid uh, gear, things of that nature on the Jeep. I do carry a fire extinguisher, which is absolutely essential. I carry a full first aid kit that's uh, a quick detach so I can rip it off the back of the seat and uh, go it's actually velcro to the back seat of the, the Jeep and uh, those things are very very important uh, from a recovery perspective and a safety perspective I do carry a large survival knife and my axe inside of my recovery box there on the molly panel at the top those things are important if you get into a survival type situation if you were out in this type of weather and you broke down or you got stuck you were by yourself I don't recommend that but if it happens and you can't uh, get yourself out you, you try your communication devices you can't get a hold of anybody and you've got to hunker down for for a cold night uh, then you want to have the ability to survive so having an axe having a large survival knife having some of the stuff that I've got in my get home bag uh, all those things come in handy and then of course you've got your standard gear I've got tire repair kits, I've got valve stem repair kits and all that stuff and we'll pull that out of the bag or out of the box here in just a second. Now all this all this recovery gear here is fairly expensive so I do keep it secured in this Rome box. It's a fairly nice box, it's not super secure but it sits in the back of my Jeep, it's got two paddle locks on it and it's got a cable lock that cable locks it to the uh, cargo hook inside the, the bed of the Jeep. So it stays fairly secure. This stuff's pretty expensive I would imagine that uh, if somebody saw the, the box sitting in the back unsecured, they might uh, grab it and take off with it. So I do keep all this stuff secured. So, all right, so let's kind of go through some of the stuff that I've got out now. One of the things with all these devices, because you also want to carry a flashlight, and I've got a number of flashlights in my, uh, in my Jeep in the center console. So you always carry a good flashlight with you. You're going to need batteries for all these things. These, uh, these small handheld radios can be charged via uh, USB, but they come standard with a 12 or a, a, a 120 volt charger. But I bought a USB charging kit so I can charge those off of the USB ports in the Jeep. The inReach can be charged off the ports, but just in case you need batteries for something like your flashlights that aren't rechargeable, I do carry extra batteries with me. Depending on what uh, I'm using, what type of batteries they need, I'll make sure I have the right batteries. These are snow shovels that I always use for hiking, and they come in handy because they're small. Um, I carry a large shovel, which I'll show you in just a second, uh, in the back of the Jeep. But um, in a pinch, these work really well for snow, and also my Max Tracks. So we'll talk about those in a little bit too, but I've got four Max Tracks there on the side. They can be used as a shovel for certain circumstances, 
uh, I recommend getting a regular shovel. So hold on a sec, let me cruise around back and we'll take a look at the back here. A little low area here. I knocked a lot of the snow off the trees, but they're still hanging pretty low. So uh, I've got my uh, Eager Beaver shovel. Super, super handy. It's got the pointed tips. It's a nice shovel, very strong. I can use that for a lot of things. As I said, I've got the four Max tracks on the side here. I've got the water containers and I've got a gas container. All those things are important. Obviously in this kind of weather, although it's not super cold, you're going to get some freezing in the water, so don't overfill the containers. But having some water in the containers allows you to deal with situations when you're off-road. Keep in mind that I do a lot of winter hiking. If you, if you uh, try to just flat out melt snow in a, uh, in a titanium pot, you're going to burn it. The snow won't melt quickly enough and you wind up burning it. So it's usually good to have regular water plus melting dealing with too much snow melt is uh, it's really kind of a pain in the neck. So if you've got some water that you can access, you could always pull one of those jugs out and you could hide in the Jeep and uh, let the let the heater thaw it out a little bit and utilize it. And therefore the extra gas is always handy too. You don't know if you're going to be spending the night out how much gas you're going to need to kind of keep yourself warm. So depending on what weather you're going into, if you have advanced notice, this actual storm came up without too much notice. But if you're planning on going on an off-road trip and there is a possibility of a storm or bad weather, you might want to consider taking a sleeping bag. Uh, lightweight down usually works, although you've got to be careful in the wintertime not to get them wet. I've got some water-resistant down that does a little bit better at maintaining insulation once it gets wet. Uh, a tent, something of that, that nature. Uh, insulated sleeping pad would be really handy. And this right line gear bag is phenomenal. I've got uh, three of the large ones and one of the medium sized ones. This is 120 liter, the medium sized one is a 60 liter. And they are waterproof and I've strapped them to the top of the Jeep and driven in a rainstorm with all my clothes in it and not a drop got in. So they're really great bags. There's other alternatives, this isn't the only one out there. But uh, I, did, I picked these up on Amazon I believe. Um, and they're pretty good priced. I don't remember off the top of my head what the price was, but uh, they weren't outrageous. I've seen some pretty high priced ones. And all I care about is that my gear's dry when I get in. So I'll tend to pack my sleeping bag, my clothing, stuff that I just can't tolerate having wet, uh, you know, my spare gloves, stuff like that in these bags. And that really helps out a lot. So Right Line Gear, fantastic product. I really like these things. Uh, and they're, they're great even if you're just, I've used them to uh, load up uh, clothing and stuff on top of my uh, my rack on just long trips to, to Michigan where I didn't have enough room in the bed of the Jeep. So it's it's kind of handy. So uh, I mentioned the larger survival knife and that's a fantastic knife to have. Sometimes you want something a little bit more utilitarian. This is a fairly cheap option. Uh, I'm pretty into knives. I've been collecting for many, many years, but this is this is a pretty cheap option. I think this is like 35 bucks or something. Nothing fancy. It's got a fire steel with it, so you can use it to uh, light. One of the important aspects of a of a knife with fire steel is to make sure that you've got a square back so you can scrape it across the fire steel and light a fire. And then, of course, you need uh, some tinder. Unless you're really good, you can actually create tinder with the knife, but uh, not everybody's good at that, so I always carry some additional tinder in my... Uh, in my get home bag. I've got a, um, a number of different tinders that I carry. I've got a uh, Blackbeard fire starter, which is basically a, kind of a, like a char cloth, which you just cut off a piece. It's like a charred rope and it lights super easy and you can really get stuff going pretty quick. I carry a small collapsible saw. This is uh, actually more than a small. It's, it's, I would call it a medium buzz saw almost. It does a great job, super lightweight, easy to carry. I do carry my, uh, my tomahawk. Uh, just in case I need some chopping chores. And as I said, I've got the uh, axe there with me. What I keep in my get-home bag. So I keep a lot of stuff in here. Some of it's essential, some of it's not so much, but it just depends on what you think you need, circumstances, where you live. Uh, I've got another survival knife with a fire steel. I've got some zip ties in there. That's all that I've got in that compartment. got a tinder bag, I've got birch bark, I've got uh, dryer lint, I've got lighters, I've got uh, paper, a 
I've got some uh, alcohol for an alcohol stove. I've got some uh, fold up camp shoes just in case my shoes and socks get wet. I've got another thing of different tenders that I can use. I've got more spare alcohol that I can use to, to light my, my camp stove. I've got a small titanium pot and an alcohol stove in this and this would be sufficient to actually heat some water uh, for drinking or for whatever other purpose I needed and I don't have them in here now but a lot of times I will carry a couple of hyper meals and I've got a couple of bags of water as well uh, I think in this side, in this side. Let's see. Oh, I've got some. Uh, I do have. Them. I've got some emergency ponchos. I've got some space blankets. I've got some emergency rations, paper towels, energy bars. So, energy bars. Different ponchos. These are little paper towels. You just add a drop of water and they expand. You can kind of clean things up a little bit. I've got a couple of hiker meals in here. I've got a couple of these and I think these are really handy. Little emergency packs of water and I carry a number of them. I can use these to help melt snow or just to drink if necessary. Something to keep me alive. And then I always carry a couple of these in addition. So this is a emergency bar. And this is a th this block is a three-day food supply for one person. It's not super great stuff, but it would keep you alive. So I carry that kind of stuff with me at all times. All right, so let me put this stuff away. I'll be right back. All right, snow's still coming down a little harder than I thought it was. We got uh, quite a bit of snow on top of the stuff. It's pretty protected. None of it's sensitive to water, so I'm not too concerned with it. But I wanted to uncover it so that uh, you could see it. So I carry a number of things. As I said, there's not really a, a science here. There's a lot of different options. It's not, you know, one thing is the right way to go, the other is the wrong way to go by any stretch of the imagination, right? There's tons of different options out there. So these are things that I felt that I needed, so I picked these up. I've got a uh, turner valve tool. I got this on Amazon. It didn't cost me much. It's a really snazzy tool. It really would help if you had to swap out a valve stem in the field. Sometimes you'll uh, catch a valve stem on Moroccan, and rip it off. Not a good place to be. Obviously, you always want to make sure that you've got a, uh, a good spare tire in good condition, filled with air. But hey, you know, sometimes it's easier to swap out there or fix the uh, valve and fill it up. Now, I have a onboard air compressor in the Jeep, so that does help me quite a bit. And you may want to pick up a, uh, a portable one. There's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, make sure you get something that uh, is decent. These these real cheap plastic deals, they usually, air compressors get really hot. So if it's a cheapy plastic one, it's probably not going to last long. It's probably going to burn itself out. But I've seen a couple different ones. Smitty Built makes one that gets a good reputation. My girlfriend's son uses it. Uh, I've seen him air up his tires after a four-wheel drive trip many times, having no issues. And he's helped others, having you know helping them air their tires up as well. So... There's a couple good options out there. Do some research, find something. But, you know, it's, it's a good idea to have it if you can, right? But uh, in addition to that, obviously, we've got the air hoses that you would need. This is my uh, speed flake setup that I can air up all four tires at the same time. That's just kind of a nicety. But it, you at least want to have an air hose with a, uh, with a tire gauge uh, set up to where you can uh, utilize. Now, some air compressors use proprietary. Make sure you know what you've got. I think the Smitty Built one actually uses proprietary fittings. So you're going to have to look for very specific fittings to, to work with that. So aside from that, you've got uh, your basic recovery gear. This doesn't apply to winter by itself, although in winter you'd probably get a little bit better uh, exercise of that gear. But uh, I've got a winch. I've got a uh, 12,000 pound uh, Apex Badlands winch from Harbor Freight. I've got uh, 80 feet of synthetic line on that. Now that line is about a year and a half old. To be honest, I've never used it to recover a vehicle, haven't needed to. Um, the only time that I've needed a winch, a friend of mine was behind me at the Roush Creek trip uh, this uh, just a couple months ago. You can find that in my channel if you want to see that. I did get high centered on a, uh, a, a very tough incline and I turtled. 
and he had to hook his winch to me and just give me a little tug to get me off of it. So having a winch is not only good for yourself, but it's good for others. Now, you need to pay attention to any kind of cable or synthetic line that you've got in your winch. Make sure it's maintained in good condition. Make sure it's wound properly. Uh, do it safely. These, these hooks are heavy and they become a weapon if your line snaps. So you want to be very, very, very careful. Uh, not every piece of gear is uh, is in good enough condition and you don't want to risk your life on a bad piece of gear. I actually have sitting here a new uh, worn synthetic rope 100 feet that uh, I've got for uh, an upcoming four wheel drive trip this coming spring out to Windrock. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put that line on after the winter. Even though this line is in pretty good shape, I have used it to snake trees out of the, out of the property. So it's seen a little bit of fraying and I don't want to risk it on an important trip. I'll probably keep that line as a spare maybe uh, in the back of the Jeep. They're pretty light, don't take up a lot of room, but I did pick up a spare. So there's um, along the line of safety, I guess let's go that direction, right? So this is an interesting bag. So I, I love organization because without some kind of organization, I can never find anything. I wind up digging through every container and bag that I've got trying to find what I'm looking for. So what this bag gives me, it's a very tough, durable bag with a handle, and it's in two pieces. So what you do with this is when you get the line from your winch st st stranded between you and a tree or you and another vehicle or whatever, it's strung between you and something else, you put this bag over top of it to hold the weight. If the line snaps, the heavyweight bag will cause the line to drop to the ground instead of flinging in a different direction. Now that's especially important with uh, cables because obviously a synthetic rope might hurt a little bit but a cable could kill you. Um, but keep in mind sometimes you've got steel hooks attached to the line and if that comes loose and comes flying at you that's not a good idea. I've seen some videos with some close calls and I don't want to be that person so make sure that you use one of these and just because you have it doesn't mean you use it, so make sure you follow good uh, safety practices when you're out there. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a joke for me about safety third, but really I, I try to be as safe as possible when I'm doing this. So one of the things this bag gives you is the ability to store a lot of your recovery gear. It adds weight to it, which is a good thing. So I've got a uh, snatch block here that can be used on a soft shackle. I've actually got another one on order. It's got a little bit better retention, but this this one's pretty good. So it's got a pretty good rating. What you do is you you take so you take your soft shackle and you put the smaller end through this. And then you loop it like that. And then you can attach this to a, a tree strap or whatever, and it gives you a snatch block to which can uh, double your pulling power on your, on your winch, or it can help you do it from a different angle. I've actually done this with toe straps to pull a person off. They were hanging off the side of a trail uh, with both their driver's side wheels, and we were able to secure them from the front and the rear up on trees, which we couldn't we couldn't get up that far up the, the side of the mountain. We were able to use this system to pull them sideways, essentially. So it's nice to have that. I love the soft shackles. Be careful about using the soft shackles in a situation where you've got uh, abrasive. So not all snatch blocks can be used with soft shackles if they've got a sharp edge. So I've got a couple of uh, cable savers. Put those on if you're going to be rubbing up against a tree and you don't want to tear up your synthetic line. I've got a number of these soft shackles stored in here in case I need them. Here's another snatch block, and this is what I, the one I was talking about. This has got sharp edges to it. it. I know it doesn't look that sharp, maybe, but those will cut through a soft shackle if you're not careful. So that's that's more to use on a D-ring, which I have a D-ring in here as well. And I got another soft shackle. So let's go to the other side of the bag. This thing got so many pockets, I forget. So there you go. 
So I carry a couple of these and uh, these will really help out if you've got something like that shackle that's got sharp edges you don't want to cut. Just be careful once again, a lot of weight on this and if this comes flying back at you under the stress of a, a taunt rope, not good. It can help. And of course I got a couple of uh, D-rings on my rear bumper as well, so it helps. So bag is really nice to provide some safety for a winch line. Excellent options. Standard stuff. Oh, I actually forgot. Tire repair kit. Tire repair kit. Really handy. You really need these off-road. Make sure you get a decent one. Actually, doesn't matter. This is a good one. Metal, handle, metal handles help. Um, I do have a high lift jack. I won't show you my high lift jack today because it's all disassembled. I'm actually good maintenance on it. The high lift jack is important. If they get uh, a little rusted up and the mechanism isn't working properly, it's a little bit uh, dangerous to use them. High lift jacks are very handy off-road. It's not something you use to change your tire, but if you look back at my Roush Creek video, you'll see where we actually did a recovery using a high lift jack and that you wouldn't have been able to do that with one of these snazzy garage type jacks. It just doesn't work. It's more for recovery issues. And this provides a good solid base for the high lift jack so this is really handy to have it. Uh, I got a whole bag full of different size zip ties. Always handy, duct tape, all those good things, right? So here, I've got a bag, I've got more soft shackles, but I've got two different tree savers. So, tree, tree saver, is absolutely essential. Uh, you don't ever want to strap around a tree directly. Use the tree saver, strap around the tree, connect the two ends, put a D-rink or a soft shackle in there, and you're good to go. It also reduces, if you ever loop your uh, your line around a, a tree, you're risking uh, damage to it. Got another D-ring in here, another tree saver. So you want to carry those tree savers. And then recovery straps. So I've got a recovery strap, I don't want to undo this because I don't want to have to roll the silly thing back up. But uh, I keep them labeled. This is my 30 foot version. And then this is my 20 foot version. So carry that. I carry a spare remote control for my winch just in case I need that. And let's see. Come on. So this is a kinetic rope. So this is a 30 foot kinetic rope, very large diameter, will take a lot of stress. This is more for like getting somebody out of the mud. So this stretches. So when you go to tow somebody out, you get a little bit of speed, the rope will stretch and it'll bounce back. And it tends to yank people out of the mud. Not for every recovery situation, but I do like to carry one. They're very handy for certain circumstances. Matter of fact, we had a, a circumstance we'll talk about here and I'll explain where this would have been kind of handy. Um, so as I mentioned, I've got the Max tracks on the side of the Jeep. So far I've used the Max tracks twice. Neither time was for recovery of my vehicle. Um, it hasn't always been um, Successful. So when we were at Roush Creek, we actually tried to use the traction boards, uh, my traction boards, to help one of the guys get up a rock obstacle, um, but the traction board kept spitting out. No matter what we did, we couldn't get it secured to where it would stay in place, and we wound up winching him up that obstacle. But when we did Second Mountain and Dictum Ridge early in the spring, we went up a, a place called Long Mountain Road. And that road's on the back side of a mountain. It's very icy. And my friend was hauling his UTV up there on a trailer behind his three quarter ton Ford. And <laughs> we had, we met some traffic coming down the mountain and it's a very narrow road. Uh, we got off to the side, we got stuck on some serious ice. It was just a slab of ice the entire road. And he couldn't get enough traction with the truck and the trailer and the UTV to get up the mountain. We tried everything. We got the axes out and chipped away at the ice. We tried to get straps on him, but the road was so slippery, we were in danger of sending two vehicles over the side. We finally got the traction boards out. We used them 
and we were able to get enough traction even on that ice to get him with some momentum so he could get up that road it was an absolute lifesaver we destroyed one of the boards in the process because with the big three-quarter ton pickup truck on ice that was a little bit too much for the board so it did split but it was still functional and uh the company max tracks actually replaced that board for me so fantastic company fantastic product i highly recommend it uh, you can use them to level your vehicle. As I said, you can use them for uh, snow removal or, or digging in the dirt or mud, although there are better options. There's a lot of functionality to it, but it gives me peace of mind having those on the Jeep just in case I ever need them. So that's kind of a, an overall on recovery gear. Let me pop in here real quick and take a look. Don't do the, the snow. show i don't know if i've ever showed a really good view of this before but this is my first aid kit i've got a bunch of odds and ends batteries and and chargers and different things that are in all these bags but this is a breakaway first aid kit so all you got to do is pull it off and you go really handy to have need a first aid kit and then i've got my fire extinguisher strap there now that's not super optimal. It's fire extinguisher. I can get at it fairly quick. Those straps are Velcro. It doesn't rattle or anything. But uh, I would like to get another fire extinguisher to put in the back on the rack. Uh, I, I think having two gives you a little bit more flexibility when you need to access the stuff. So as I said, I've got my GMRS radio hooked up. I've got my stealth antenna up here on the roof. I get fantastic reception with that. Uh, across the board I feel like I'm safe a lot of those the communication holders there one of them uh, I use to put that GPS unit on that gives me that uh, that uh, GPS access if I need to so that's uh that's what I'm doing for recovery gear to date uh, I'm really interested to see what other folks are using, if somebody's got better options. Um, smaller, lighter, cheaper. Cheaper's not always better, but if it works as well, I, I go with cheap. I got no problem. I got that Badlands winch because I saved a ton of money by buying it, and it works just great. Never had a problem with it. Um, those are the types of things. Guys, obviously, safety is more than just having a couple of pieces of gear. Recovery is more than having a couple of pieces of gear. You gotta have a capable vehicle and you've gotta have it in good working order. You, you, before you go out on the trail, make sure you check all your nuts and bolts. Make sure that uh, everything is tight the way it should be. I check my bead locks uh, every time. I check my uh, my lug nuts every time. Make sure everything's tightened up. I look at all my, my uh, undercarriage, make sure that all of the lift kit components are uh, properly torqued and that uh, there's marks on them to make sure that if they've turned a little bit, I can see that. I check all that every time before I go out. I make sure that my winch works. I make sure that my air compressor works. I make sure, crazy things, that I have windshield wiper fluid in the, uh, in the reservoir so that when my windows get dirty after going through a mud pit, I can rinse them off. Uh, all those types of things, guys. So there's a lot to safety um, and recovery. But I'm really curious, what else is out there? What are you guys doing? What what uh, would you recommend? What do you like or don't like about my setup? Um, you know, please leave me some uh, questions or comments below. Let me know what you guys are doing. If you've got recommendations for me, love to hear them. Love, love, love to hear them. So, all right. Thanks for uh, sharing the snowy day in Virginia with me. You guys have an excellent new year. So another aspect of safety and recoverability is your um, tools. So obviously we've got the, the stand. This jack does not help too much in an off-road situation, but it can't hurt to have it. Plus the, uh, the bar here can be used as a, as a crowbar if necessary. I also carry when I'm off-road a bigger toolbar or a crowbar. But... Um, You've got most of the essential tools here in this roll-up bag inserted in this box. I keep uh, two different torque wrenches. I keep the sockets for my lug nuts and for the, the beadlock bolts here. And then I also carry this charger box. So this is a lithium battery. I pull it out every month and recharge it. It seems to hold a charge really well. 
but uh, this this box can charge the uh, or jump start the vehicle seven to eight times on a full charge so I've used it a couple of times with my car and I've used I've never used it with the Jeep but I've used it with other people's vehicles and it will fire it up my uh, my car was a Cadillac CTSV with a 6.2 liter V8 motor so if this can turn over a, a 6.2 liter then it, it'll work on a Jeep so very handy to have especially if you're out uh, camping um, and you're running stuff off the the Jeep especially off the inverter in the bed then uh, you you run the risk of bringing the battery down to a level that it won't start the Jeep in the morning so this is really handy to have if you don't have some type of a dual battery setup I am looking at uh, a different setup for my batteries I'm possibly going to install a uh, a large battery in the bed for utility purposes my fridge and things like that but this works great for uh, all intents and purposes so I wanted to show you that and uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put all the gear out on the garage floor so that you can kind of get an overall view of all the things that I'm carrying so I'll be right back all right so I realized when I look back at some of the uh, footage that uh, some of this was maybe a little bit hard to see. It was it was cold and snowy that particular day, and I was probably a little bit in a rush. Um, so I wanted to give you the, the larger view of the, the things that I carry standard in the vehicle. And I do this, all this stuff is usually with me. It's very rare that I leave any of it home. Occasionally I'll take the Rome box out if I'm not going off road because it's got most of the, the big recovery gear. Um, but for the most part, I carry all of this all the time. So I noticed that it was a little, little bit dark. You couldn't see the molly panel with the uh, axe and the survival knife, plus the attachment for the um, high lift jack attached. So I put that light in there so that you could see that a little bit better. And that's my standard carry. Um, so as we discussed, I've got the, uh, the speed flate, tire inflator that does all four tires at the same time, but I carry a regular air hose and air chuck and a gauge to uh, be able to air up with my onboard air compressor at any time. Uh, I do carry multiple toe straps. So that's a 20 foot labeled on the bag and a 30 foot labeled on the bag so I can tell the difference. This is my gear bag that also does weight for the winch line, which creates um, a little bit more safety in a, in a winching scenario so that if the line breaks, it falls down. I've got my uh, winch cable protectors. If I am going to uh, be close to a rock or a tree, you can use these to um, put around the winch line so that it doesn't fray the winch line. I've got my battery boost box just in case my battery dies and I need to jump start myself. And those are some charging cables for that. It allows me to use that as an additional uh, box to like charge my phone or whatever. Um, obviously, I, I don't need that. But uh, it uh, also allows me to charge that box off of uh, the, the Jeep's output. I charge that about every 30 days or so. And usually it's down just a hair, but it's still got enough juice in it to be able to do numerous starts to the vehicle. So I've got uh, the, uh, the snatch block, regular type snatch block, which you need to use with the D-rings. I do carry the two D-rings, plus I carry... I've got the two D-rings on the back of the uh, bumper of the Jeep as well. So I've got uh, numerous soft shackles that I can use with uh, just about any combination of things as long as it's not that snatch block which may cut through them. And then I've got this snatch block which works off of one of the soft shackles as I showed you in the video to, that's able to help. I carry the two tree savers here. Never know when you might need multiples uh, the same as the uh, straps themselves. And then I have the uh, kinetic rope, which is the one that actually helps you uh, pull out of like mud. It uh, stretches and then bounces back. So I always carry uh, as many tools as possible. So I do carry two torque wrenches. One is outfitted with a socket for my bead locks. The other is outfitted with a socket that supports my wheel lock so I can uh, check my, my uh, lug nut torque. And then I carry an array of tools uh, I don't know if that's, uh, that's all I need, but I carry standard and metric of pretty much everything. Some crescent wrench, some uh, lock joint pliers, a couple screwdrivers, a multi-tool crescent wrench, um, 
all those things. Um, I carry uh, zip ties because you never know when you might need zip ties. To go along with that, I carry uh, plenty of cordage. This is just a small sampling actually underneath the uh, rear seat in the Jeep. I've got uh, a couple different bundles of paracord. I carry uh, spare fuses. This is actually the uh, pressure meter for the onboard air compressor. I've had problems with those in the past. And this little cable is something I created that will bypass it just in case it gives out. I haven't had any issues with that in quite some time, but if I do, I'm good to go. I've got the, the witch controller. This is my spare. I've got another one in the vehicle that I use as a wireless, but this has got the wired, and this will do wireless as well. But I keep spare batteries. I do check the batteries on that and the operation of both of them before I go out. I've got fuses because you never know when you might need additional fuses. I've blown a number of fuses on the air compressor a couple of times and uh, had to borrow other people's air compressors to fill up. So I always carry the spare fuses, duct tape, and then some steel wire because obviously that can come in handy. So uh, I've got my tire repair kit and my valve repair kit. Super important first aid kit with tourniquet, all kinds of different things. There's tons of stuff in there. Whether that's the proper setup, I don't know, but I went through it and it looks like I've covered most scenarios that would happen. At least, uh, you know, life-threatening that I could deal with them. No doctor, not gonna be anytime soon, so it's ridiculous for me to carry surgical tools. Um, I, as I said, I've got the spare line for the, uh, for the winch. This is a, a worn 100 foot, 12,000 pound line. Um, and I've got the uh, high lift jack uh, stand here that provides some stability. As I mentioned, the high lift jack itself is undergoing uh, maintenance. I've got to uh, paint it up. It's, it's rusting a little bit. And I want to make sure that it's all repainted and oiled properly so that it works correctly if I ever need it. Um, I've got the, uh, the tinder, right? So I've got a ton of different tinders. So this box is filled with dryer lint. Uh, birch bark, little twigs, and I always keep a couple fire steels with a scraper plus uh, a couple of Bic lighters in there. I've also got a couple of Bic lighters in my cooking pot. Um, in addition, I've got another set of tinders here with a knife that's got another fire steel on it that I always carry. I've got some paper to help get a fire lit as well. Um, I've got my uh, my camp saw and I went ahead and made that out super lightweight easy and it does a great job of uh, cutting logs I've got my hatchet if I need to process wood uh, and obviously it's a little bit easier to control than the axe although the axe is better for splitting big stuff so I've got both I've got alcohol and I've got heat which will run the alcohol stove that's in my titanium pot here and as I said there's uh, a little camp stove alcohol camp stove in here along with um, a lighter so I've got a couple of mountain house meals just in case. I've got, I love these things. This is a quick and easy little water filter. It's got very good filtration, but you just uh, undo the cap, scoop up water in this little uh, rubberized bag, put the cap on it and you can drink right out of it. So you, it's easy to carry. It holds up real small and uh, that provides you water filtration just in case you need it. I've got some emergency drinking water. Toilet paper in a plastic bag always a good idea plus I've got the little uh, just add water paper towels I, I always carry a pocket knife in my pocket but just in case it got lost or something I carry this in my uh, get home bag um, I do carry the uh, titanium utensils a couple of them just in case um, this is a little grill titanium grill super lightweight and small that I could uh, throw up over a, a small fire and, and potentially cook something or uh, sterilize water if I needed to. I've got some sport beans to give me that uh, boost of uh, energy in my fold-up camp shoes. They zip together. They're not great shoes, but they're good for uh, emergency camp use. I've got my energy bars here as an emergency food source just in case. I've got a number of the emergency ponchos and a couple of the foil mylar rescue blankets that I always carry. And I always carry most of that stuff is in my get-home bag. So that's kind of an overview of what I carry for recovery as well as uh, safety. And like I said, if there's anything that uh, you see here that um, could be improved upon or anything else, uh, just uh, let me know. I'd, I'd be 
grateful of any suggestions that you might have. And as I was putting everything away, I was packing up the uh, get home bag. I realized that uh, I didn't show my hammer and my pry bar. So I typically do not carry these unless I'm going out on a four wheel drive run. But uh, the, uh, the hammer, I've never actually had to use out four wheel driving, but uh, it's a highly recommended item by most folks. Um, and I carry this big pry bar. I just put it down underneath the uh, seat in the Jeep. But um, so far I have used it never to uh, like bend a tie rod back in place or anything like that. Strangely enough, I've used it more often to uh, use as leverage against big rocks to either uh, move them slightly or actually get them out and put them in the path of the vehicle so that we could get over a given obstacle. So I did want to show that. Not something I carry every day, but comes in handy. So I appreciate you watching. This is a very long and rambling video. Um, I know it's not perfect, but I was trying to cram a lot in. It was a little on the cold side in the garage, so I probably rushed it a little bit and didn't do as good a job as I could have. But hopefully I got the content out there. I, I've got some ideas that uh, can help somebody decide on what they should do from a recovery safety or get home bag kind of perspective. Um, after all, it's it's about trying to embrace the suck. We can't eliminate the suck. So uh, let's do what we can to make ourselves safe and comfortable out there. Um, I did forget to mention that I always carry a, a it, it's a Thermalite. There's a lot of other brands out there, but it's basically a sleeping pad that's a closed cell phone that folds up accordion style. I use it most often to uh, provide some padding if I got to crawl underneath the Jeep and do any kind of maintenance keeps me a little bit up out of the mud and it keeps my old knees from banging against the hard ground. Uh, but it also provides a, uh, a, a, a thermal layer if for some reason you've got to camp out in your car, the cold can come up from below and this actually helps reflect some of the body heat back. So that's an item that I did not show that I always carry in the, in the Jeep. So as I said, thank you for watching. I've already done enough rambling. I'll cut it short here. If you like any of this content, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the content, give me a thumbs down, but let me know why you're giving me a thumbs down so I can improve future content. And then if you want to see any of the future content, go ahead and, and subscribe. Uh, I don't know how much content we'll be putting out, but I've been putting out quite a few videos lately, and we do plan to do a big uh, Windrock four-wheel drive trip with the Nova Jeepers uh, this coming spring. So thank you much.